what's up guys welcome back to my youtube channel once again my name is dash lifestyle kindly for watching me for the first time remember to subscribe like share and also comment to my returning subscriber thank you so much for always coming back and watching my video thank you so much for the love and support and greetings greetings to my brothers and sister all the way from caribbean country so guys in today's video i want us to watch this video from ibrahim traole the president of Burkina faso Ibrahim Traole he has come out and explained how the West they are trying to bring him down, how the West they want to finish him. And we all know guys uh, what Ibrahim Traole is doing in Burkina Faso. Ibrahim Traole is changing away the West, is changing, is changing the colonizer system in his country. He is removing all the colonizer system in his country and because of that the West they are not happy, the colonizers they are not happy. To see Ibrahim Traole, uh, how he's doing to his country. And because of that, right now, Ibrahim Traole is being targeted by the West. The West, they don't want to see Ibrahim Traole uh, uh, doing more things in his country because the West, they are fearing um, Ibrahim Traole, he might influence some of the African country. And because of that, the West, they are really trying to bring Ibrahim Traole down. So, kindly, guys. I want you to watch this video of Ibrahim Traole coming out in a national television from Burkina Faso explaining on how uh, he's being targeted. Kindly watch this video till the end, then I'll be back with more comment. Uh, and thank you. As a young man, I cannot be at the top of the state and maybe want to find myself under mangroves eating rusumbala like the others. That is to say, to accept to forget your youth, to accept to forget your life, and to devote yourself entirely to your country. One of the risks is this situation that we are living, destabilization. Because if you want to straighten the boat in such a country, inevitably you have to survive. And by surviving to straighten the boat, you create internal and external enemies. So we have to face this situation of destabilization, of murder, and of everything. Because we have affected the interests of many people. There is social inequality, there is corruption, there is poor management of public health. If we try to straighten all this, inevitably we will affect the individual interests of some people. And these people are often rich. They have money, they use it to manipulate often poor people to put them at risk. This is internal. And these same people do not hesitate to coalesce with the imperialist forces who spend their time trying to impoverish us. The other side are these external forces. There are many countries today that we have on our backs, we have no choice, we have to do it. If we want our country to be independent, if we want our sovereignty, if we want Burkina Faso to eat at their expense, if we want our children to go to school without paying a penny, if we want tomorrow the malaria, which is one of the most common diseases in Burkina Faso, so that we can heal our population, in some words, at zero cost. Some dreams that we have, but we will have to make a lot of concessions. We will have to prevent certain powers from pillaging us. And that creates a lot of enemies. So we are prepared for these situations. We live them as normal, in fact. It does not frighten us, it does not scare us. It still gives us the courage to move forward. Because through these events, we know that the directive line that we have chosen is the best line for our country, for our people. So we live it like that. And the plotters, actually, we have spent two years raising awareness, talking, putting people on guard. But it was necessary for the Burkinabe to see for themselves how far certain Burkinabe can go against the country. If we had started to serve in a certain way, it is not obvious that you will understand us. Captain Thomas Sankara was misunderstood at some point. Maybe because they started strong. But we had to let the people see, understand what these plotters are. Communicate with the people. The audience of Bobo Durasso would like to know what the fate reserved for these plotters is. As we said, from this moment on, I will not go into details. 
si quelqu'un entreprend des démarches. Everyone will take responsibility. If someone takes such a step, he assumes all the consequences. We will not advise anyone or put people on guard. Let's go back to the case of Barcelago. An audience member would like to know what really happened. But I think Barcelogo was personally targeted because Barcelogo and I have a history. Barcelogo and the situation of the country have a history. In July 2022, you may be able to contact Barcelogo. I challenge a lot of orders to intervene so that Barcelogo does not fall. I sacrificed a lot of things to Barcelogo. This is the place for me to thank a lot of people who supported us in our maneuver. I think they targeted Barcelogo because it was going to affect me. That was the objective. I do not want to go into certain details. Maybe one day we will have the opportunity to talk about it. Your reaction to the speech on the political orientation of the fire of Captain Thomas Sankara is a concern of Ile Budo of Ouagadougou. It is true. We have chosen the date of October 2nd for the launch of the Patriotic Day of Patriotic Engagement. It is precisely to corroborate with the DOP. Because this speech was a reference. I think that some countries far from our sub-region use this reference to develop. They make us understand because they accused a lot of things of this speech. We are inspired by this news and we adapt it to the context. There are some things in its time, in 1983, that cannot be done today. But we adapt it step by step. Thomas Sankara was too much ahead of his time. I think that all this means that he was not understood, because he saw things that others did not have the opportunity to see. His vision was much more ahead. But today we realize that we should have, we should have, every time we ask ourselves these questions, should we not have, should we not have, it has already happened. But I think that it is a new speech. It is the same vision for a total sovereignty of our country. I think that we should join this launch. I would like to know what is the morale of the troops with this validity of destabilization. I would say that the morale of the troops is at a fixed level. Because to engage to defend the country, you know that when you are a soldier, there is another state of mind. It is natural in the army. To get up, take your backpack, your weapon and go to the front is not given to everyone. But generally in the head of the soldier, when he leaves, it is with pride. He knows what can happen, but it is with pride that he leaves. And today, with what we have put in place, we are trying to make an effort through the support of the people. Many soldiers are really proud to be soldiers. That is why they give their body and soul. And with all the support that the people also make in their place, I think that it can only boost the morale. It is true that this situation of destabilization does not affect them, but it gives them even more courage to fight. They understand better why they have to fight for their country. They know that it is not for nothing that we are trying to destabilize ourselves. Despite the fact that we were able to change the situation in terms of equipment, training, if people still try to stabilize it gives more arguments to the military to boost their morale and to fight. Thank you. Hervé Cabor joined us for the questions of the listeners. Hervé, it is your turn. Yes, Chantal Nikiman. My question is to Mr. Alassane Wedrago, who is calling us from Kaya in the North Center. He asks after the attack of Barsalbo, the public opinion wonders if sanctions have already been applied to the meeting of the responsible and accomplices, or are we in terms of justice and reparation for the victims of this tragedy? That is the question of Mr. Wedrago Alassane from Kaya. Thank you, Hervé. Mr. President, you have the floor to answer Mr. Wedrago. Okay, thank you. It must be said that after every attack since we have been there, after each attack we try to analyze the situation to understand what worked and what did not work. As long as we can't do it, we can't improve the situation. 
So naturally, after the attack of Bar Salbo, on a military level, we must analyze what happened, what worked and what did not work. We are almost at the end of this investigation. I think the military authorities have been to Bar Salbo several times to investigate, to continue to investigate through Kaya. The responsibilities will be set in a few days. I am waiting for the result of the report, and the sanctions will fall. All the attacks, that's what we do. There have been attacks where we have often brought some people to their knees who have failed in their duties. Because we don't have a choice as long as we are committed, and we feel that the failure comes from the device, we have to get rid of it. So we are waiting for the final report to act. Regarding the victims, it is natural. We have adopted laws so that the children of those who would have lost their lives in this war, we recover them as a treasure of the nation. And those who have fallen, we take them as martyrs. The government is permanently on the side of the population to be able to take charge on the psychological side, on the humanitarian side health and everything, of all the members of the families who have been affected by this tragedy. Hervé Cabor has questions from the listeners. He joins us once again. Yes, I speak directly. Obviously, the listeners have still sent questions. This is Mr. Thomas Cafando from Zinhari. In relation to the local consumer, he asks, what are the strategies for an endogenous development based on made in Burkina products? And then Mr. Karim Zongo from FADA asks, you have governmental teams who are currently meeting the usual leaders. What are your expectations? Thank you, Hervé, for these two questions. Mr. President. Okay, thank you very much. I see that the concept of local consumer has been launched. It is very important to us. If you notice, first of all, in terms of investment, the first steps we took were an analysis of a certain number of factors. First of all, we have to promote what our artisans are putting into practice. That is, Faso Damfani, Coco Donda. This led us to reflect on the issue of towels, teachers' towels, which were imported expensively. We instructed the minister to change the towels. Today, it is done in Faso Damfani. The ladies who do it, there are many ladies who join the workshop, and it is a great achievement for the employees. Also, the instruction was given to the Ministry of Justice to change their towels to be able to adapt to our Faso Damfani and many other social classes, even in the army. I think if you have followed the minister's outfit, it is in Burkina Faso Damfani. There are many things that we try to promote locally and in many other areas, especially in transformed products. Currently, we are in the dynamic of promoting everything that can transform our raw materials. That is, food products, so that they are consumed by Burkina Faso, which led us to take a decree to institute the fact that if someone wants to import a product, no matter the product, as long as there are Burkina Faso that manufacture it, he must first take it to Burkina Faso, and when it is not enough, he can take it abroad. It is a strong act that we have taken to be able to encourage what is produced locally to be consumed by Burkina Faso. I think we are in a good dynamic. We cannot reveal the entire strategy because, as I said, those who are used to importing do not necessarily like to apply what we want. But if we want to be Burkina Faso, we have to take measures. It will not please others, but it will please a lot of people. I think that is the most important thing. Mr. Karim, I would like to know your expectations concerning your government teams that are on the ground. Yes, these are outings that were planned a little while ago. It is like the first outings that coincided with the events of Barcelona. We had planned several outings. When the event arrived, we told people to go and make the program. During this period, we stopped the Council of Ministers for a week. We want the ministers to go to the populations to acquire realities, 
to see the realities of the people and to come back. A minister is at the level of the decision. If you are just in Ouagadougou and you cannot understand the deep aspirations of the people, it is complicated. So this program will not be the first time. It will not be the last time. They went to the populations in all regions to acquire realities, to understand the difficulties. And I think that each minister will rearrange his program according to the real needs of our populations. It is the same state of mind that led us to go to the leaders because we want to put them back in their role. Their role is to maintain social cohesion, unity, peace. They have to assert themselves. They have to help us educate the youth. These are the messages that are brought to their place. Whatever we say, they are key actors of our society. And we want to put them back in their role so that they can help Burkina Faso to return to its ancestral values, which are values of peace, unity and cohesion. Thank you for these insights. Mr. President, the news, security and defense are closely linked. As we gather the concerns of the listeners two years ago, under your impulse, Burkina Faso engaged in a total war against terrorist armed groups. Today, what is your assessment of the reconquest of the national territory? Thank you. We will stop talking about the situation on the ground because it is the essence of our fight. As you can see, I think that as soon as we started our actions, there was another face of terrorism that Burkina Faso has discovered. So it has challenged us a lot that it is not just terrorism. I think that the objective of these people is even greater than that. The last time I spoke about the fourth generation war, they manipulated a lot of people to put them against their brothers. Today, you look at the terrorists and at us, they are young people who are dying. So we have to stop it. We have to stop it quickly. To do it, we had to arm ourselves with courage, train ourselves, recruit, because the staff, the equipment, nothing was up to the task to be able to face it. I remember that the terrorists said that on December 31st, 2022, they were going to celebrate the end of the year in Ouagadougou. Then when we did the analysis, we realized that they could do it. What was going to stop them? I don't see. With the number they had, the dormant cells, if they activated on December 20th, they could celebrate in Ouagadougou, nothing could stop them. Unless we call on the same powers that created them to intervene and enslave us. So when we took our responsibilities, you saw very quickly that we started to recruit both in the military sector and also at the level of the VDP to try to contain the threat. Today, the army is much more equipped than it has ever been. But we say that this is nothing. The equipment will come 10 times, many times more efficient than what we have. We will continue to recruit to have a strong army because independence, sovereignty, as long as you don't have a strong army, you can't assume it. So it will continue in this sense, and we will continue to face the threat. Regarding the fight against terrorism, some Bukinabe make the link between national reconciliation and the fight against terrorism. Do you understand their logic, Mr. President? So guys, I hope you have watched that video from Ibrahim Traole coming live in a national uh, television uh, of Burkina Faso. Ibrahim Traole here said how the West they're trying to bring, her, to bring him down. They want to finish Ibrahim Traole because the West they are fearing that Ibrahim Traole, he might start influencing some of the African country to follow his footsteps. And for so many times, guys, I've been telling you that the only thing that the West they are fearing is us African country to unite. They don't want African country to unite because these people, they know if African countries will unite, will come together, the African will develop, the African will not depend in any uh, in their country. And the same way, the Africans will cut uh, them uh, coming here in Africa and taking our resources because we all know that 
the West they cannot do without Africa. They depend so much in Africa. They depend in our minerals. They, they are depending in our resources. And because of them depending so much here in Africa, they don't want to see African country coming together. And also, there are the reasons to why our African leaders, they are betraying us African people, us black people, because they usually, they are the ones who are turning our African leaders to be puppet. They are bribing our African leaders. They are making our African leaders to sell their resources to these people. The same way what it is happening in the Caribbean. We have seen how IT, right now the Haiti people, they are fighting simply because of these, of the colonizers of the West. The West, they were turning the Haitian leaders to be puppet. They, are, they were making Haitian leaders to sell out their country. And because of that, you can see that the fight, the, the fight that it is going on in Haiti it is because of the West people, it's because of the colonizers. And also, guys, I know that Ibrahim Traoré has started to influence some of our, some of the African leaders, and this is one of the big. Uh, this is one of the reasons to why the West they are really really trying to finish Ibrahim Traoré. And for me, I keep on praying for Ibrahim Traoré each and every day because this is the leader that we have not ever seen in our African country since uh, these leaders, since the leaders of the African, they started ruling. We have not ever, we have never seen a leader as young as Ibrahim Traoré, as open-minded, as brave as Ibrahim Traoré. Because Ibrahim Traoré, he has come out and ashamed those leaders, the, some of the African leaders. Because like here in Africa, we have the leaders who have stayed in power for more than 40 years, for more than 50, for more than 70, for more than 80 years. You can imagine, African, we are having an old leaders. You can imagine a leader who he cannot walk for a more for for uh, for for a distance of five uh, kilometers for a distance of not even kilometer. He cannot walk for five minutes. This is tell you that some of the African leaders they are becoming too greedy for power. They are too greedy. They only want power and they are they don't want to resign simply because the African leaders they are so so greedy to the power and. I really want to tell these old leaders because this these African leaders who they have stayed in power for more than 50 years, for more than 80 years, they have done nothing in our African country. You can see Ibrahim Traoré is the youngest African leader and also he has managed to achieve some of the African leaders they have never achieved when they have stayed in power for more than 20, for more than 50 years. But Ibrahim Traoré he has managed to achieve and this is to tell the those African leaders who they are, uh, they are denying. They don't want to leave the power. They don't want to leave the young leaders to come in power. They should step down. They should give at least a priority to to the young leaders who are coming right now. The likes of the leaders like Ibrahim Traoré, because Ibrahim Traoré he has managed to show us as African people we can do it without the West. We can, we can, we can, we can develop our African country without depending to the Western uh, country, to the colonizers. And I want African uh, leaders also to follow the full step of Ibrahim Traoré. Ibrahim Traoré is opening our eyes, is showing us the way. And also we as African people, we need to support Ibrahim Traoré. In full support in what Ibrahim Traoré is doing, we need to support him. And also, I pray that Ibrahim Traoré, he, can, he, he needs to become an African leader. We want to see African becoming one country, not African being divided. We are, I want to see African using one currency. This is the mission also that Ibrahim Traoré has here in Africa. Seeing the colonizers, they are getting out of Africa. Seeing the colonizers, they are not taking our resources to, from here in Africa to their country. Seeing the colonizers are li not turning our African leaders to be puppet. And also seeing African becoming one continent, one country. Seeing African becoming borderless. Seeing African becoming a visaless because you don't want any visa to go in other African country and also seeing African using one currency, seeing African using one network. That is the Africa that we all want. And kindly guys, subscribe if you haven't. I want to leave, uh, leave it from there. Subscribe if you haven't. Let's pray to our 
young African leader Ibrahim Traole and we he might continue doing the good work that it is doing and also he's influencing some of our African leaders not only here in Africa also some of the Caribbean leaders the Jamaican the Haiti uh, leaders also to start working according to the will of the people so kindly guys subscribe if you haven't like this video share and also comment see you on my next one bye bye